This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. here for another episode of attack rap today we have another special guest on the show with us we have former own sound attack theo peckham on the show with us and as a lot of people know theo is around this area so it, this is a really nice treat to be able to have somebody even more local than we're normally used to so uh theo appreciate this man yeah no problem thanks for having me all right so um i i know that you and I have had conversations over the last year or so. You've been definitely, you and your wife have been definitely dabbling in a lot of different things. Kind of tell us where you're at right now away from hockey. Um, yeah, so me and my wife, right now we own the Great Canadian Boutique Outlet, which is on the west side of Own Sound on the Sunset Strip. Um, yeah, it's just a nice, uh, you know, fashion store. It's got, you know, custom furniture, women's clothing, um, some home decor. And yeah, we're, we're really, you know, enjoying being back in the community. And how, how has that been uh, starting that or going and buying that and then uh, trying to immerse yourself a little bit more into uh, the city of Owen Sound? Um, well, it's more so my wife. Um, yeah, she's been working here for about, um, nine months and uh the opportunity to came came up to buy it and, and we kind of jumped at it um as far as myself i i just do the heavy lifting here i just you know build stuff uh move stuff i don't really do too much thinking around here which is nice <laughs> now i know uh theo in the summertime you actually had uh an ice cream truck out, out front of your place there over on the sunset strip and it was really popular every single time i drove by there there was always lineups Tell us how that went and maybe what approach you guys are taking this year. Um, yeah, that was an awesome learning experience. That was the first um, business that I ever owned on my own. Um, it was it was an awesome experience. Um, this year, we're, we're not going to have the trailer there anymore. It's going to actually be a hut. So it'll be just a little 10 by 10 hut that um, will have your creamy treats. Um, we're, we're kind of experimenting with a couple different um, types of ice cream. We're not really too sure which way, which direction we're going to go, but um you can be sure it's gonna be it's gonna be delicious. Are you guys, are you guys gonna maybe try to take a little bit like try to stay as local as you possibly can with it? Um, we we've thought about it. Um, there's a couple different options. Um, in trying to stay local, I mean, there's a couple really really good local ice creams here. Um, with Chapman's and obviously Big Bay, who was here last year. Um, but there's also the opportunity to maybe bring something that you know Owen Sound doesn't have. Um, there's a couple different, um, you know, manufacturers, I guess, if you'd call them that, um, that we're, we're looking into. And, uh, yeah, it, it, regardless, it's going to be ice cream. Ice cream is always good, right? Absolutely, for sure. Um, so tell us kind of how things have been for you outside of, of the business end of things. I know I see you out on the golf course every so often. Um, tell us kind of what life is like for you outside or where your life went uh, after hockey for you and after the Owen Sound attack? Um, it, it, you know, when I when I went to the NHL and, and you know, things were great. I mean, obviously playing the NHL is awesome. And, and you know, it, it's, it's a tough it's a tough thing to try to describe as, you know, it kind of, you know, and I, I don't I'm not going to blame it on the fighting and the hitting and, and, and the stuff like that. But, you know, I, I definitely ended up going down maybe a, a, a bad path in my life and, and, you know, coming out of hockey and, and kind of, you know, straightening things out. And, you know, I've got a family now, I've got two kids and a wife and, you know, I, I don't want to say that it was a negative experience, but, you know, I, there was definitely some things that I, I would change if I could. And, and, you know, obviously, looking back now, you can't change some things that you did and, and some things that you're a part of. But, you know, it, it, it was, you know, and, and this is probably the first time I'm actually saying this to anybody, you know, other than my wife, that it, it wasn't, you know, the most memorable experience of my life. It was, it was, you know, I want to say negative. It was it was very tough on my life. Um, 
you know, being in some of the situations that I was in, um, and I'm just being honest with you. Um, For sure. Um, it, it was, you know, a lot of, it, it's, it's a lot. And, and I, I, it's tough to explain. Um, you know, I was just a, a, a kid from Owen Sound. You know, I was from Richmond Hill. I came to Owen Sound. And, and the OHL seemed like the biggest stage in the world. And then you get to the NHL and it's just, you know, your eyes are, it's almost blinding. And, and you know, it's the, it's the common tale. You know, you come from nothing and then you get there. And it's, um, yeah, it was definitely experience. But, you know, getting myself to where I'm at now, um, you know, it's, it's always the, um, I went through what I went through so I could get here today. And, and that's kind of, you know, the experience I take from it and and it kind of is what it is absolutely um so I know it, first of all we do really appreciate you going and, and sharing this uh it definitely does mean a lot and it, it's a little bit of a of a of a different approach as well because we we talk to a lot of people and they they say um what hockey's kind of done for them and whatever and it's usually uh they, they have uh, some some good feedback or whatever to you you're kind of on the opposite end of that so that's interesting in its own right but it, it's good that it's it's helped kind of you've gone through those motions you are where you are today um maybe try to take me back a little bit to when you were a, a young kid from richmond hill going to owen sound what was that like um going from a from a a, a, a city like richmond hill to the small town of owen sound personally i loved it i mean obviously i, I i'm back you know i live here now um, it, it, it just in talking about my first, you know, camp and my first experience here, I actually forgot to skate my first camp here. <laughs> so I, I had to, um, I, the, the, I, I, this, the trainer assistant, stick boy, whatever you want to call it. Um, Andrew Bruce, he, um, he lent me his skates and they were the oldest model Nike you could ever imagine. And I'm falling all over the place and, um, so that was my first impression on, you know, the coach at the time. And I, funny story, um, Andrew Bruce is actually my neighbor now. Um, wow. we, live, we live two blocks away from each other. I'm, I actually live in Terra now. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, it was quite the experience. I, I loved it when I came up here. I mean, everybody treats you so well. You're pretty, you know I mean? You're known uh, back when we used to go to West Hill. It was awesome. Um, I, I personally, I loved it. Um, I spent a lot of, you know, I think uh, two years in a row, I, and, you know, when the season would wrap up, everybody would go home. Um, I'd usually stay and live and, you know, stay here and finish the school year with my, with my billets. So I, I loved it here. So um, what was it like growing up with those motions through, through Owen Sound? Uh, you were known, as you mentioned, kind of as a, as a tougher guy, as an, as an enforcer. What was that like though? Um, being at the Bay Shore, you've got three thousand plus fans there. You know how it is there. Um, going in and and having to have the Owen Sound faithful root for you every single uh, night, night in and night out. It was awesome. The only thing I didn't like is they asked us to turn on the music and warm up. I didn't <laughs> like that. I I always had a sour taste in my mouth about that. But no, it was awesome. I I you know I still remember you know like that one series against Kitchener. Um, socket to them night things like that um you know it was always special especially come playoff time i mean you get to like fourth row standing room um and how loud it used to be and and being in the starting lineup and it was just it was it was really special and, and a lot of memories that um that i'll you know i'll carry with me forever absolutely so you go in and you uh go away from Owen sound you go to the nhl and then you come back, kind of, what what gave you that incentive to come back to Gray Bruce? Maybe not even go back to Richmond Hill, but come back to Owen Sound and Gray Bruce. Well, I actually married a local girl here, so I had no choice. <laughs> she was coming here without me. Uh, but yeah, no, her family, they've been here, you know, her whole life. And, and when we were, you know, kind of, you know, thinking about where we were going to settle down, I guess, um, yeah, I just came up on sound, and I like I loved it here. So it, you know, I didn't have any any issues with that. So compared to Richmond Hill, I gotta ask you this deal because I ask every every hockey player this: what the 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 snow load is is he <laughs> compared just night and day to to Richmond? Well, Hill? remember I played in Edmonton for four years. So fair enough. Fair enough. 
you know what? It actually snows more here than anywhere. Really? It's, Edmonton was super cold and we always had, you know, cold snaps. We had, you know, a week or two during the winter that was minus 40. Um, you don't really get that here, but the snow here is just, it's, it's next level. Wow. <laughs> yeah. There, I, I've not been in a place where there's more snow as consistent and knock on wood, we're having a really good winter so far, but um, I'm sure it's coming. It's, it's all. Yeah. You, you and I both know it's only a matter of time before, before the big one comes in. Here, you know, just so. before you think you might be golfing next week, you, it's, it's a matter of time. It's exactly. It's, yeah. You, every you know, year. You know, you know, it was funny. I was actually going and um, I was talking to, we had Jared Maidens on the show last week. Yep. And uh, we were chatting with him. And he actually is from where I'm from, the Niagara region. He had told me five days prior to the show, he was out golfing. Yeah, well, I, I believe it. Yeah. yeah. It was yeah. a great year for golf. I, obviously, I'm, I'm an avid golfer. Um, <laughs> it was an awesome year to be golfing in December. It yeah. was a uh, was cool um i know i got a, a bunch of buddies out in bc that some of them played last week nice so it's awesome. uh it's definitely special i mean it's on sound so if, even after you know november even if you are golfing you're in a you know it's wet it's cold it's <laughs> but Absolutely. you know the character of, of on sound right for sure <laughs> so you know kind of tell us a little bit about what life has been like for you uh, from March, really, last year until now. I know things have definitely been different. You know just as well as I that our area, we're quite fortunate with with the low amount of cases and whatnot. But what have you really kind of gone and take a, taken away from everything with, with COVID starting last March? Um, you know, I, I, and I'm a new father. Well, not new. I have a four-year-old and a three-year-old. And um, back when it did really hit in March, and they did, they went through the, the big, you know, month-long lockdown. Um, I, I thought it was great. I mean, just just staying at home and kind of, I mean, Owen Sound is is kind of a slower-moving city as it is. Um, it was it was nice though to just spend two weeks with my kids and and my wife, and not you know, not. <laughs> My wife is, is yelling back. She she was quite upset that they closed the playgrounds. <laughs> um, no, we um well, we loved it. I mean, it, it's it's obviously it's unfortunate, you know, financially, you know, you might go through some things, and and I'm, I we we were all hit by it. But um, you know, the positives were, you know, just you, you really you really lose track of spending time with your family, and and I think that was an awesome you know point in our lives to just not you know not change out of our pajamas every day <laughs> absolutely for sure so you and i as we've already alluded to are our big golfers um when that moment happened where you were able to golf what kind of relief was that kind of almost off your shoulders oh, where you could get i was do something? it was every day at what one o'clock ford would speak <laughs> and i was we were counting every every day me and my golf buddies would call each other this is the day today's gonna be the day yeah and it just let us oh, what three weeks four weeks he, he let us on <laughs> but uh, you know what uh, if there was ever a sport he, they they put you know some some um restrictions on on cross-country skiing this year and i it's just like you know i i won't get too deep into it because you know whatever side you pick you're wrong but sure. it just you know you're outside in a field walking around and, and if you're anything like myself you're walking in the bushes by yourself looking for your ball right so it's it was <laughs> It was a, a weird experience. It, it, I mean, we've never dealt with this, though. But I mean, you look you look back at the some of the pitchers when they you know back in the Spanish the Spanish flu days. You know, people were walking around with gas masks on. Yeah. So it, it's it's in in you know comparison to that, it, it, we're just it's just us repeating it. You know, and and yeah. wherever it goes, it goes. But you know, I I will certainly be very excited when they open the golf courses this year. Yeah, you and me both. Trust me. Um, you're, so as you did allude to, you you are a father of two, so you have a four year old and a three year old. Tell us a little bit about maybe, I, I they're probably at an age where this is kind of difficult for them to comprehend, uh, yep. with everything that's gone on with COVID. What is something that that maybe when when they get a little bit older that you're going to be able to kind of go and and, and tell them or or a life lesson you could show them from from what 2020 uh had had for yourself i think maybe just appreciate everything that you have because things yeah. can change 
worked awfully fast. I don't remember what it was like to walk into a store and not feel like I should be putting on a mask. And that's yeah. kind of a scary thing, you know, and things can change on any random Tuesday. So just be, you know, be thankful and, and spend as much time with your family as you can. But I mean, they, they'll, they'll never remember this. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so when you, um, I, I know you, you have gone and stepped away from hockey. Do you play recreationally? Do you do any any kind of hockey? Yeah, I play in the rec league here in Owen Sound. Yep. Um, me, Chris Menard, uh, Chris Robertson. Oh, no, Robo doesn't play. Um, who else plays? Uh, a couple other guys. Um, Jeff McDermott. A yep. couple other older pro guys play. I mean, it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, I was supposed to play senior this year for the Shell Lake Crushers. Um, but uh, obviously senior canceled. Um, yeah, I, I try to play. I, 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 and don't get me wrong. I love playing hockey. Yeah. I maybe didn't enjoy professional hockey too much. Um, again, not the tough, a tough experience, but, um, I, I still love the sport and, sure. you know, my son, hopefully one day he'll play hockey. I certainly won't force him to, but, um, you know, I, I certainly enjoy, enjoy strapping on the wheels every now and then. <laughs> so when you're um, – if, if you have a 16-year-old kid that's just about to go into the Ontario Hockey League, even with the Owen Sound Tax, say, for instance, and they're, they're getting to that point where they get older, they go through the OHL, and they're, they're going to go either – they're going to try to go pro or they're either going to do something in school or whatever. What's the lesson that you would maybe let them know? You know what it- – it's the old, the old guard. They'll never have to deal with what we dealt with. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I, I, and not to toot my own horn, but I, like I set the record for penalty minutes for the own sound attack. And like, yeah, you have to fight. I, I fought 30 times that year and, wow. and one year, you know, and the, I had 60 before I turned pro. So like just what that does to you, it changes you. We're not supposed to be fighting and, and going out there, you know, like the, the best way I can explain it is, is you take an MMA fighter, you know, right now. So take, you know, Conor McGregor. He's the most famous guy in the world. So he fights, you know, after he goes into the commission and they suspend him based on his injuries for anywhere from three months to a year. You're not allowed to fight to protect him for his safety. Um, us, you know, back in my day, you could you could get your bell rung and fight the next shift. Yeah. You know, there's really no, there were no guidelines. There was no, you know, procedures. There was just go out there and give it all for the team. And I, you know, taking it back, would I change anything? Probably not. You know, I'd still go out and, and do exactly what I did. But, you know, this day and age, the player today isn't going to have to go out there and think that he's literally got to fight for his job. Yeah. You know, and, and, and playing in the NHL, you know, you're, in, in my case, a player like me, you know, you're probably fighting, you're blocking shots, and you're killing penalties. You know, yeah. and, and that, you're playing hockey, but, you know, you're not. You know, yeah. you're hitting people, you're, you're trying to get the puck back, and then you're trying to get it to the better players on the ice, right? And in terms of that, like, the, the, the mental, you know, and like I said, my kid will never have to deal with, hey, should I go fight that guy? Yeah. Hey, having a coach send you to go fight somebody that's the 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 most you know i I can't tell you the 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 fear you know being told to go fight Derek bugard you know i that happened to me i was i was 20 years old 21 years old hey go that guy's broken three people's face in the last month go fight him you know like having things like that happen even and just living, you know, one fight at a time, you know, every Tuesday you're thinking about the fight you got on Thursday yeah. and every Thursday you got, you're thinking about the fight you got on Saturday. And it's just, it's, it's no way to, to live. So in, in terms of a message that I'd send my son, you know, if, if, the, if the times were the same, it's just, if you don't want to do it, you don't have to. Yeah. You, and go out there and love the game, play the game. And if, if maybe you're not, good enough playing the way you want to play yeah. don't don't think that you're ever going to catch any heat from me because you're not doing something that somebody else wants you to do yeah you know I, that kind of makes sense um you know i spent 10 years you know 
just doing stuff that maybe I didn't enjoy. You know, maybe I, I didn't love. Nobody loves. I, I mean, I, sh- I shouldn't say that. Some guys love fighting. Yeah. And I think you know you can look at a, you can watch a player watch them fight and and know if they like it or not. And yeah. I don't think I was ever really a guy who enjoyed it. Um, from day one, I had to do it to stay on the team. I always had to do it to get to the next level. And you know, it just kind of. You know, you fight once, you beat somebody up, and then next thing you know, you're a fighter. And uh, wow. it happened to me when I was, I think, 15. I I grabbed somebody and, and beat them up, and then I was a tough guy, you know? Yeah. So then you come to camp here, and you've got, you know, a label of being a tougher guy, and, you know, maybe they want to see you fight somebody. So you got to go and fight them because you want to make the team. And then it's it just keeps happening, you know, the further you make it up, up the ranks is – Oh, well, we heard he's a tough guy. He'll, you know, stand up for his teammates. And, you know, at the end of the day, you know, once it stops being about, you know, your teammates and your teammates stop caring whether or not you're fighting, you're just fighting to stay on the team, right? And mm-hmm. that's the hard part. So the message I'd send to my son is just, you know, enjoy it. Enjoy it. It's a sport, you know. And I think I think that's being lost, you know, in, in terms of, of, of minor sports in general is that – the message we're, we're the things we're trying to do with our young children is is you know teach them how to take direction from adults, um, have fun with each other. Um, I think that's being lost in in minor sports. It's all about you know how can I get my kid to the next level, and in in situations especially in a town like Owen Sound, um, you have a group of you know maybe twenty kids, fifteen kids that are going to be friends forever. Yeah, you know and that and that's what we need to be teaching our, our youth is that. You know, this this is the best place in the world where you can develop people skills. You can get a, a group of kids that are going to be together forever, friends forever, and and you can really do a lot of good, but you can really do a lot of bad in what we're teaching our kids now. And I think, in terms of minor sports, I haven't gotten involved yet. Um, yeah. I don't know if I'm going to be able to for that reason. Yeah. That I'm not trying to get kids to the next level. I would never. It, it, and I, I don't want to badmouth anybody because a lot of guys, that's what they're doing now is, is they're developing youth. And I completely understand that, the drive to get kids to the next level. But okay. I think we have to be more, you know, focused on creating human beings than, than good athletes. You know? Absolutely. For sure. Um, no, you had, you had a, a, re, a lot of really good points. And I, and I think one of the, the things that people do have to realize is, being like being an enforcer isn't all about going out like you said isn't all about going and laying a couple big hits and dropping the gloves it it, it looks exhilarating on tv but when you're in the moment it's definitely different so we do really appreciate you going and terrifying that. yeah um unless you're the you, big dog at the park it's it's terrifying yeah you know and would you would you go and say um uh, like would you say that um in your with your time in Owen Sound and and even what you might have taken away in Edmonton, would you say things like time management and uh, maybe organization stuff like that it has been something that you've been kind of able to take away from hockey to even establish in, in uh, like a business sense? Honestly, that's the things I was bad at. So. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, I, I like I wasn't the, <laughs> the model pro, you know. Uh, <laughs> Um, you know what though, the things I did take from hockey, you know, just sitting in a room and talking to people, you know, I'm usually pretty comfortable. Um, I mean, you do so many appearances and stuff like that with hockey that you can usually put me in a room and I'll make some friends. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much the the one thing that I really did take from hockey into, I guess, my career as an entrepreneur. (laughs) Yeah. So, uh, let's, let's, Kind of, we only have about five minutes here. Let's take a, a quick step back and say, uh, kind of, where are you aiming um, for for yourself as an entrepreneur? I know you did mention the fact of you're you're going, you guys are going to have a little ice cream hut out there. But do you have anything kind of down the road that maybe you're you're planning? Have you that? Have you thought that far ahead yet, Theo? I have actually. It's funny. Me and my wife just talked about it last night. Um, it involves golf. Um, okay. I- want to it's 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 just slowly getting in the motion so i I don't want to say too much about it but um i'm hoping to bring you know some more golf tone sound 
Um, obviously, it's my passion. It's what I love. I, I, again, the same message I'll, I'll, I'll tell my kids is just do what you love. And the, the old model, if you if you do what you love, you'll never work a day in your life. But yeah. uh, um, besides that, I, I don't really know. My wife calls all the shots. So I just <laughs> happy wife, right? Absolutely. <laughs> um, so, so obviously you've gone out, you've, you've gone golfing with uh, maybe a couple guys, even from the attack or, or even some, some uh, pro guys that, that you kind of met along the way. Um, who would you say is kind of the best, uh, the best golfer out of your, out of your guys that you, that you played hockey with? Ah, none of them. I think they were pretty, <laughs> they're all pretty bad. Like I just, so I recently really got back into golf. Actually, since I retired, probably. Um, but like, I used we used to golf. Me, Devin Dubnik, Ryan Jones, and like we were all like equally bad. Like it, we, none of us were really good. Um, who was good? Horkoff was pretty good. Um, okay. A lot of stories about Mike McDaniel and and Dan Cleary being all all time golfers. Wow. A lot of stories about Mike Medano not just not working out. Yeah. He'd come into the, the gym while the guys were working out and he'd do a couple golf exercises. He'd grab the ropes <laughs> and work on his, 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 his swing a little bit in his flip flops and then just <laughs> just walk away. I think his what did he used to say? It's only as hard as to make it. <laughs> <laughs> so and these are just stories I heard. Um <laughs> But uh, yeah, no, nobody really good. Um, I know uh, Marcus Carroll, yeah, terrible golfer. <laughs> and I hope somehow this gets back to him because we're supposed to be playing golf here, uh, uh, probably in the next month or so. And once this lockdown ends, I'm gonna head over there and, and play some simulator rounds with him. But awful golfer, just terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because uh, Marcus has actually already been on the show, so that uh, that's pretty good. Um, uh, Theo, before we go here, um, from your time in Owen Sound, do you have um, do you have maybe anything that you want to go and, and say to Attack fans, uh, maybe that you weren't able to say before you went pro there? Um, sorry, I just got my little guy. Um, you know what? Just thank you. Um, you know, I, I was made to to feel really at home here. Um, you know, the everybody from the you know just the the, the fans to the boosters. Um, a really special story, actually, um, Helen Lewis, um, and I've never told anybody this. Um, when I was my first year, I, I, I told I made the team. Um, I couldn't afford a suit, and uh, she brought me out and bought me a suit from Cornblooms. And um, wow. just a special shout out to her, um, just the the type of person that she is. Um, that you know, that, that no need, at no point did she have to do that, but she did. And you know, if I could ever say thank you to her. Um, she actually lives in Terra with me, and I, I say thank you all the time. But, you know, if I could publicly do that, that's awesome. That's awesome. That's cool here. Listen, Theo, this was uh, this was a, a good attack wrap. We were able to kind of get a little bit of, an, of, of a different look in, in, in things, and we appreciate you sharing this, man. I, I know we chatted earlier in the, in, in the year, and you're kind of you, – you're on the fence about it, but we appreciate you joining us here. It was, oh, it was so a lot of fun. Thanks, guys. All right, uh, and hopefully we catch you out there on the golf course this year, too. Warming up. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Okay. Call the Rogers TV viewer response line, email us, or connect with us on social media. Captain Kidd, Captain. Little girl is lost. I'm taking her home. How much you offer?